All right. Knowing that the land vertebrates, or what we sometimes call tetrapods, arise evolutionarily from within these, this group of sarcopterygians, with their closest living relatives being the lungfish and the coelacanth, let's now take a look at how we get the evolutionary diversity of the various groups of land vertebrates. So somewhere around 300 million years ago, from within a group of somewhat diverse lobe-finned fish type creatures, there's a fairly good transition, including changes in the limb, leading to uh, animals with a limb adequate for walking in the terrestrial environment or being on the land, apparently still partially aquatic. And from there, we then get a diversity of what we would call early tetrapods or early land vertebrates or what are sometimes, I think, poorly called fossil amphibians. Because from within this group, we can get the two big branches of modern land vertebrates that would include what we call the modern amphibians and all of the other modern land vertebrates, which are best grouped together as amniotes. Now, within the amphibians, we have a bit of diversity. We have the frogs, salamanders, and Sicilians, all being able to breathe through their skin, having a complex life cycle with usually aquatic larvae, and living in fairly wet environments, and also a great capacity to regenerate, probably a derived characteristic, especially in the salamanders, allowing them to regenerate entire limbs. So that's our modern amphibian diversity arising, again, from within this vast group of early land vertebrates. On the other hand, we get all of the rest of the land vertebrates, which would include three main groups, the turtles, the mammals, and this group that in includes most of what we might call reptiles, but not all of them, and also birds. So these groups, turtles and mammals, are pretty easy to look at and understand turtles um, take on early on within the diversity diversification of amniotes, amniotes being land vertebrates that have an amniotic egg that uh, keeps its moisture inside. So it has a membrane that keeps it sealed and develops, it can develop in a dry terrestrial environment and also have scales. And turtles get these big scales, scales called scoots on their back. They form a big shell uh, around almost the vertebrae. They have a beak with no teeth in their skull and a very different looking skull and a very typical kind of body form that has not changed much over what is really hundreds of millions of years. And so that's an easy group to see the turtles. We have the mammals, uh, which eventually evolve a fur mammary glands and from within the mammals live birth and so and it becomes a very distinct group with many many other characteristics like the shape of the heart uh, the shape of the pattern of circulation the digestive pattern even many of the bones of the limbs and the position of the muscles all uniting the mammals together and then we get this group over here that is perhaps united by some unique features of the skull, so they're sometimes called diapsids, but it includes um, one modern, what we sometimes call kind of a living fossil, the Tuatara or Sphenodon. It lives only in New Zealand, and it looks very much like a lizard, but has some primitive characteristics compared to all of the rest of these critters. And then you've got lizards and snakes, or what are sometimes um, together called lepidosaurs, um, which are also united by a number of different characteristics and have a great diversity, especially with the snakes living in burrows underground. About half of all of these species are snakes, and there's also a bunch of other li groups of limbless lizards that um, evolve separately, the loss of partial loss or complete loss of limbs. And then we have this group with crocodiles um, as kind of the most modern uh, outgroup to all of the rest of what would include dinosaurs and birds, and this group gets grouped together sometimes as archosaurs. The birds arose from within the dinosaurs, and we have a great evolutionary transition from small, fast-running dinosaurs, different from the typical dinosaurs we think of, um, into uh, Archaeopteryx, a classic transitional fossil form that has feathers and wings, but also claws like a dinosaur, and now a whole bunch of other intermediates to get to fully flighted birds. All this happens to be a chicken that doesn't fly all that well. 
So this group, again, is called the archosaurs, and it arises from within a larger group that includes turtles and mammals, which came first, turtles or mammals branching off, or all of the rest of the diapsids, not real clear, or the rest of the arc of the, the um, amniotes, but this whole group would be the amniotes. So again, this question of what is a reptile really informs us about this entire ev diverse uh, evolution of land vertebrates, because we have an idea of a reptile kind of being a scaled, um, sometimes even desert dwelling, dry land, animal with a particular kind of egg and we know that turtles fit within that idea we know that turtles lizards and snakes and crocodiles as long as well, along with most of the fossil dinosaurs all fit that idea of what we have as a reptile but birds which we don't think of as reptiles arise from within this group and we're not even sure whether turtles are more closely allied with the rest of the birds and reptiles or maybe you know um, branched off earlier than mammals. There's a lot of questions about this branching order. And so the best way to think about this is we have, again, to just kind of go back and, and review, we have the evolution of land vertebrates about 300 million years ago into a diversity of different kinds of early tetrapod or land vertebrate groups. Unfortunately, sometimes called fossil amphibians, probably not a great name for them. And from there, we have one branch leading to the modern amphibians, the frogs, salamanders, and sicilians, and another branch leading to all of the amniotes, which would include three main groups, turtles, mammals, and this reptile bird clan, which has the crocodile and bird group that we call archosaurs. And so the question of what a reptile is, well, we have an idea of sort of a scaly land vertebrate kind of critter, but really evolutionarily hard to define, unless we include birds and ally the turtles with the rest of them or exclude mammals, something like that. So that's how this question of what is a reptile can really help us grasp what we mean when, or get a grasp on the evolution of land vertebrate diversity.